Hey, and welcome to the Headliner Podcast. We're dedicated to helping podcasters grow their shows through the power of social video. A big thing we like to talk about over at Headliner is how important the discoverability of a show is, or to put it in other words, how likely a potential listener is to find your podcast when they're looking for something to check out. It's a big subject in the podcasting community, and is something that comes up all the time and that's trying to be solved in a ton of different ways. While we here at Headliner usually focus on ways to boost your podcast engagement and listens through video, I thought we'd do things a bit differently on today's episode and that we should focus on ways to make your podcast itself as discoverable and accessible as possible. This episode was partially inspired by a podcast creator that we here at Headliner put out a little while ago to help show hosts figure out ways they could better optimize their RSS feed. Our podcast creator is available over at podcastgrader.headliner.app. And it's a quick and easy way to scan your RSS feed to see how search-friendly and optimized it is. It searches for a number of criteria that include whether or not your show is on major podcast players, whether your RSS feed mentions your social media pages on it, and whether your podcast host has an integration with Headliner to make promoting your new episodes with video as easy as possible. And if you haven't checked out our podcast creator, I definitely recommend giving it a whirl. All you need to get started is a link to your RSS feed, and you can visit the grader by following the link in this episode's show notes. But let's say you've already graded your feed, and you're looking for a few more ways to make finding and accessing your podcast as easy as possible. Well, that's what we're here to discuss today, starting with the website that your RSS feed has on it. A podcast website is a great way to make sure that your show is as accessible as possible. But while many podcast hosts allow you to create a simple homepage for your show that includes your audio as well as exit links to a number of podcast players, there's a lot of value in making your own website for your podcast from scratch using a site like WordPress or Squarespace. By moving your podcast site over to a service like either of those, you'll be giving yourself a lot more customization than you'd get on a site generated by a podcast host. And while that's definitely more work for you, it actually offers a lot of benefits for helping people find your podcast. That extra customization can come in the form of a personalized landing page, being able to send your listeners to a wider variety of podcast players than you may be able to from a site by your podcast host, or everyone's favorite tool, SEO. With your own podcast site, you can create dedicated blog posts for each episode of your show. You could use this blog post to fill out additional information that didn't make it into your episode, to offer a transcription for your episode itself, or to host clips and excerpts from your podcast for anyone that's curious about what the episode offers. The big benefit of doing this is that you're loading your site with keywords that are tied to the subject of your podcast, which will make it easier for people to find your show while they're searching the web. Another great thing about doing this is that, because you're posting an article as opposed to something that's simply linking to a podcast, you'll be able to reach a wider, more diverse audience than you could with just your audio. Plus, your audio can still be a part of the post. There's actually a lot you could do with a podcast website, so if you're at all curious for learning more about starting one, I highly recommend our blog post on the subject. You could find that post over on headliner.app slash blog. Having a clean, informative podcast website on your RSS feed is an easy way to make your podcast easier to find online and, in my opinion, is worth the time that it takes to get one set up. Another thing you can do to optimize your RSS feed is to consider adding episode art to your show. Every podcast has its show art, which serves as an illustration for the entirety of your podcast. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can always create art for every episode of your show. While this may not directly lead to more downloads for your episodes in itself, I think this is a great move for podcasts in specific genres. Some of the types of podcasts that could benefit from episode art are interview or research-based shows, due to the subject of each episode being a little different than the previous one. An interview podcast that serves as a great example of a show with episode art would be Off Camera with Sam Jones, a show dedicated to interviewing famous actors and musicians. Each episode features a headshot of the guest that was taken by the show's host, who's a well-known photographer in Los Angeles. Episode art is great because it's another way for your audience to become engaged in your show, and because most podcasts don't use it, is a great way to stand out from the crowd. Plus, if you're a headliner user and you're signed up for our automated podcast videos, our site actually uses episode art for its clips. That means that any of your podcast videos that you're sharing on Instagram are going to represent that episode specifically as opposed to your show as a whole, which is great for helping diversify the content on your feed. 
Having episode-specific art is great for promotion because it's tailored specifically for the biggest draw of that episode, the subject that makes it unique. And plus, creating episode-specific art doesn't necessarily have to be a long or tedious process. Thanks to tools like Canva or Photoshop, if you're looking for some additional functionality, you could easily set up a template that gets updated and tweaked each week to fit your new episode. And then from there, it's as simple as applying that artwork to your new episode. The third and final way to optimize your podcast feed that we'll be covering today is remembering to make sure that you've set it up to include mentions of your social media pages on it. You can often do this from the settings of your account on your podcast host, and having up-to-date links to your social pages is a great way to help steer listeners towards interacting with you directly. It's also a very low-effort move that can come in handy when it comes to making sure that accurate information is displayed across podcatchers that have your show on it. It sounds simple, but making contacting a show as simple as clicking on a Twitter or Facebook icon in a web page is the kind of accessibility that goes a long way in building a rapport with your listeners and driving engagement to your podcast. And not only does making yourself more accessible to your listeners help with the show's engagement, it also helps with growing your audience due to how tweets are a public form of communication. By encouraging your listeners to tweet and interact with you, you're also encouraging them to essentially market your podcasts to their friends and followers by proxy. Having and maintaining a healthy and up-to-date RSS feed is a great way to gather the various pieces of your podcast and your marketing into a single, succinct package. By keeping your feed updated, you're giving people interacting with your show an easy and organized way to travel across the various pieces of your podcast. This is great for listeners, of course, but it's also great for podcasters that want to be easily reached by potential sponsors, press, or other podcasters looking for guests. If you want to find out more about RSS feed optimization or how your podcast feed fares, you could take Headliner's free podcast feed test by following the link in the show notes of this episode or by visiting podcastgrader.headliner.app. And with that said, that brings us to the end of this episode of the Headliner Podcast. If you want to use the power of video to share and market clips from your podcast on social media, feel free to check out headliner.app in order to create a free account and start creating videos. And if you want to learn more about what we're working on over at Headliner, feel free to sign up for our weekly newsletter by visiting headliner.app slash newsletter. I hope you guys got some value out of this episode of the Headliner Podcast, and I hope you have a great day.